Understanding consistent hashing has three key components. In this short lecture, we will cover the cons concept of hashing, load balancing, and finally solving the problem of load balancing through consistent hashing. What is hashing? A hash function uses a mathematical formula that scrambles its inputted data. We can create hashes of nearly any digital content, a document, an image, or a song. At its core, all digitized data is represented in binary, a string of zeros and ones. For example, the word hello in binary is 01001000 and so on. It's important to note that a hash function is scrambling the binary code representing the word hello, not the letters in hello. Since the hashing algorithm is just a function, the same input will always produce the same output no matter what. In normal situations, if two inputs produce the same hash, we can be pretty confident that the two pieces of content are identical. We can therefore use hashing to quickly check whether changes have been made to an original piece of data or whether, or whether the inputted password is correct when logging into your email. Note that there are many different hashing functions that do the same function, but their mathematical formulas are, on how they scramble the data is slightly different. What is load balancing? A server is a computer that serves a request and sends back a response to another computer. For example, when you log onto your Amazon account, your computer is making a request to the Amazon servers in order to render the home page. Remember, a server is just a computer that sends back information to you. When a company has multiple servers, we need to solve the problem of how to equally distribute the number of requests that come into each server. Let's say you have four servers. You want 25% of the requests to go to each server. So how can you equally balance the load? The traditional way of solving this is through the modulus operator. When a request comes in, each request is randomly assigned a request ID. We then take the request ID and hash it. Request number one, is hashed to be number 10. We can then use this hash, which is a string of numbers, find the remainder divided by the number of servers, and the remainder is two. Therefore, request one will go to server two. Because the hash function is uniformly random, in theory, you can expect all of the servers to have a uniformly random number of requests and an evenly distributed load. This was the traditionally accepted solution, but it assumes that you will always have a set number of servers and that you will never add or remove a server from your infrastructure. As a company grows and the number of re requests grow, we want to be able to add servers with minimal change to the rest of your infrastructure. In this approach, when you add or remove a server, you have to reassign each request to a different server. This is because request number 10, modulo 5, will be 0. So it will go to request server, it will go to server S0. Servers hold information in, your lo in their local cache. Information like your preferences and user profile from the previous session are saved so that the next time you log on, the page can re-render where you left off. We want to avoid dumping this important, important information. However, with this approach, when the entire system changes, all of the useful cache information that we originally had will be completely dumped. This is because the same request will now go to a different server. We want to avoid this. We want the overall change to be at a minimum. So how can we solve this? This is where consistent hashing comes into play. In consistent hashing, we first make a conceptual ring of hashes. We map onto the ring the hashes of the request ID and the hashes of the server. However, each request ID will go to the server that is immediately clockwise to them.
because of the way we map onto the hash ring in a clockwise direction. The change to your servers will be smaller and more uniform when a new server is added. When a new server is added, the only server that is affected is the immediate neighbor. The requests that originally went to S1 now go to S4. The other servers are not affected. Because the hashes are uniformly random, we can expect the load to be uniformly random and on average be equally distributed. However, this does not always happen in practice. It's possible to have a very non-uniform distribution between servers. In this diagram, we see most of the requests are being handled by one server, S0. In order to ensure a more evenly distributed load, we can introduce the idea of virtual nodes. Remember that there are many different kinds of hashing functions. Each server is hashed with different hashing functions. The inputted server ID is the same, but the outputs are slightly different. This means that server S0 can be hashed with different functions, and the outputs will be from hash 1, 20, from hash 2, 50, and from hash 3, 70. The inputted server ID is the same, but the outputs are slightly different. This means that S0 is hashed with hashing function 1 and then outputted to be 20, then hashed, it's, and then it's also hashed with hashing function 2 and 3, and the outputs are slightly different. This means that server S0 lives in multiple places on the hash ring. Instead of being here on the hash ring, it can now live here and here and here. This increases the randomness of the load. And when an, a new server is added, the requests that are affected are more uniformly random. Additionally, if one server has more capacity than others, we can put it through a higher number of hashing functions so that it lives in more places along the hash ring. Because it lives in more places, it will serve more requests. And that is virtual nodes. That was a brief introduction to consistent hashing. Thanks for watching.